there you are, my sweetie, my mommy, sweet little baby. May I have another pencil, please? I suggest you quit chewing on them, if you want them to last a while longer. Here, Pierre. Thank you, Mademoiselle Dupont. Mm -hmm. I'm not a supervisor, McBain. I'm an inventor. What's your problem? You never had it so good. The Army provides you with one order after another. It's what's in those contracts. They all have such short delivery dates that we subcontract the work to others. Just look at Farrand Delorme. They got the important work. They do the assembly now. Meanwhile, I go back and forth from Valcourt to Montreal. But worse, they've begun hiring away my best workers right here in Valcourt. If I remember, it was you who said you weren't organized for such a huge assignment. Uh, that's for sure. I'm not organized. Now there are more workers deserting the factory than soldiers deserting the army, I tell you. They're sick of turning out parts. What they want is to make machines. You think I was some hired hand, solving your little problems while the army can't decide, are they accepting my patents or not? About the patents, they promised me a reply within the month. The army never came looking for me. I wasn't recruited. I showed you my invention and you called it fantastic. Then you offered to do business with us, didn't you? Mr. Bombardier, these days you can't do business at all. There's a war going on. Yes, what is it? I thought you'd want no, to see it. No, it's all right, Mademoiselle Dupont. The differential, eh? What's the matter now? Well, the differential on the Mark I. Too much strain. Now it don't work. Okay. Let's have a look. Can't be too serious. Mm -hmm. well, that's fine. That seems all right. The bearing is shot. Do you like the skis? You see how the gears work there? That makes all the difference. All from the works of an old clock. Janine, go put some music on. Goes forward. on the tracks now see if it works ta 
que nous arrive le temps des fêtes, tout le monde s'en sent le cœur réjoui. On se donne la main puis on se la souhaite avec ses parents puis avec ses amis. C'est comme ça ça se passe dans le temps des fêtes, t'appelles la galette, les garçons, les filles avec. C'est comme ça ça se passe dans le temps des fêtes, c'est comme ça ça se passe dans le temps du mois de l'an. C'est comme ça que ça se passe dans le temps des fêtes, t'appelles la galette, les garçons, les filles avec. C'est comme ça que ça... Hey, children, let's pick up all the papers, but don't throw out the presents out with them. Germain. Rayez un beau whisky blanc, la bonne femme a des tourcières de fret. Your mother said you don't want to go back to boarding school after the holiday? Your education is important. I want to stay in Valcourt. You can't always do what you want in life. You've got to learn how to make sacrifices. I don't want to make sacrifices. Children go off to war in Europe when they're your age. He gets. That's allowed. It's not because of the work, but I don't like it. It's too boring. You're almost a young man now. You're not a child. But it's Christmas, so let's not talk about it now. You're on holiday. It'll all work out. You'll see. These things always work out. The German Luftwaffe has intensified its air raids over Britain. The bombings have reached new heights in the demonic art of destruction. Hitler has set out to thoroughly demoralize the English people. But the skies of all Europe echo with the proud reply of the Londoners, we will never surrender. Canada has its heroes to be proud of as well. The Canadian Army is putting to the test the ingenuity of the country's inventors. In the village of Valcourt, Quebec, Joseph Armand Bombardier and his team of brilliant American engineers is working to perfect an armored car capable of transporting and supplying the Allied forces. The result is the Mark I. The inventor himself puts his new all-terrain prototype to the test. Primarily a vehicle destined to maneuver in the snow, the Mark I reflects its inventor's lifelong efforts to conquer the harsh Canadian winter. As a result, the Canadian Army has entrusted him with an awesome task to oversee the production of a military transport vehicle designed to travel safely and reliably over the vast and varied regions of Northern Europe. With this as their goal, Joseph Armand Bombardier and his technicians work day and night to overcome the formidable problems that their undertaking presents. It's a race against the clock. They must succeed in their enterprise before the German engineers do. Was that why you brought me here? I know, of course not. It's a surprise to me. All Canada should be proud of the inventiveness of their countrymen. Joseph Armand Bombardier, whose tenacious efforts and technical genius contribute to the victory of the Allies. In another effort, the combined American and Canadian troops have formed a special unit known as the Devil's Brigade, which is training in the field with the eventual aim of an offensive in Europe launched from Scandinavia. Another example of the dynamism and courage of our country's forces on behalf of the Allied cause. You saw the services I rendered the army? It hasn't brought a thing to Valcourt. That's not true. The men have been working. What more could you have done? They just turned out parts, all the assemblies done in Montreal. It's better than nothing. They're somewhere much worse off. Yeah, you don't understand. Are you Monsieur Bombardier? Yes. Your inventions are absolutely fantastic, sir. Oh, thank you. Ah, we're going in circles. Meanwhile, I haven't invented the thing. Haven't you now? How about your patents? Just routine work. Here we are. But it's not inventing. Not when you're told to do it. It has to come from inside you.
Don't go so fast. It's so dark you can't see. I know the road. You know what I think has been eating you lately? The damned war, that's what. You were never able to work for a boss, Armand. But now it's not one, you've got the whole army over you. They don't understand. I'm wasting my time. It's just as simple as that. You're not the same man. You were always a lot of fun, always making jokes. Now you have nothing to smile about. You're always so angry. It's the war, Ivan. That's it. Wonderful. It's a letter from the Department of Defense. Are you aware of it? Aware of what? Extremely doubtful validity, and the department is not prepared to admit their validity. Well, they've made their decision. They're not accepting your patents. <clears throat> Would you explain how it's possible that the government of Canada accepts the patents on one hand, but on the other hand, the Canadian Army doesn't? Do you know how many years of work these inventions represent? I have spent 10 years of my life working like a demon. Mr. Bombardier, if you wish, then we'll discuss it. There is nothing to discuss. My plans are exploited by everyone, but as far as honoring my valid patents, you dare to send a piece of dribble like that. I think we'd better continue in your office. It's been a year since you were to settle it. All that we ask is that you respect our contracts. Oh, you want me to respect the contracts, but you don't want to respect the laws of industry. I'm going to sue them. Oh, no. Because I'm taking you to court. You won't get away with this. Ah, Ma, take it easy, will you? It's not his fault. He doesn't make decisions. It's the committee. Oh, it's not his fault. No. Get back to work, the rest of you. I'm down. Get that thing ready. Ah, Ma, be reasonable, will you? Oh, no, not on your life. Yes? Ah, oh, Monsieur Bombardier. Do they take me for a fool? They owe me $38,000 for my patents, not $2,000. I know. I saw the letter. You think I should close my business? Is that what you think? Monsieur Belanger, they've had 500 vehicles built using my patents. You've got to act with circumspection. Oh, no, you've got to act, and that's all. They don't give a damn about me. Look here, Monsieur Bombardier. For two years, we've advised you. By now, you ought to trust us. It's gotten out of hand. You're right. But you must realize that a payment like this has another significance. In an agreement to pay, even if it's only $2,000, the Army indirectly accepts the validity of your patents. Really, it's the strongest presumption of your right to the invention. Presumption? Put yourself in the place of the Army. You're not hired to put yourself in the place of the Army. You're hired to protect my interests. The main thing is for them to accept you as the owner of the patents, so that they'll be honored when the war is ended. When war is ended? If the Army doesn't recognize your patents, do you think your competitors will? Will they agree to pay your royalties when the war is over? I'm paying you to defend me, not to defend them. Aren't you able to prosecute them? A matter this important is liable to take about 10 years before it's settled. And I want to make it quite clear that I'm not certain we could win the case for you. And during that time, your patents will not be recognized. Now, is that what you want, Monsieur Bombardier? Monsieur Bombard. Are you still here? 
Yeah. I decided to drop the charges I made against the army. That's the wisest thing. Business is better. Six months we'll have forgotten it. I know that for your self-respect, it's not a question of self-respect. I was cheated the way you cheat a poor little country boy. Leave that. Marie-Jeanne will finish it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Sure. Here. I'm gonna bet 10 cents on the first game. It's five years since I've played pool. Is that so? Maybe I'll up the ante then. <laughs> You know what I thought of? No. You remember when the old man raised such a rumpus the day we tried out your motorized sled? <laughs> it's true, we could have been killed. Oh, it sure has been a while since we've played a good joke. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> that little dog of Marie Jeanne's. Armand, not Marie Jeanne's little mutt. <laughs> about the uh, suspension brackets to hold the skis. And? Well, he thought the basic conception was good, but we need a much thicker bar. Really? Monsieur Bombardier. Yeah. Whenever you got a minute. He hasn't got time. Nobody can do that. Would you mind telling me what that's yeah, doing yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, let me take care of it. Jones, come over here. Get a couple of guys to help you remove that stuff. Then there's that reporter, Trobley, from the Tribune. He wants an interview. Tell Raymond to deal with him. I haven't got time. Now. There. Those are the contracts with the dealers you sign there at the bottom. Uh, uh. We've reached 342 vehicles. If all goes well, we should have turned out well over 400 by the end of the year. Yeah. Now, that um, is our reply to the Chrysler Corporation. And we say that their motor interests us, that we would like to have a demonstration, and, of course, what sort of price are they willing to give us. That's right. Aritz Breuil, and the rest is as usual. Mm -hmm. Gaston Guy. Seven hundred and fifty dollars. And thirty cents. That's what it costs. Mm -hmm. Now, that is the letter to Monseigneur de Rallou in Sherbrooke, who wondered if we'd contribute something to his charity. I figured that five hundred dollars... Oh, yes, that's a fine idea. <clears throat> Gilbert Grégoire. Fur, roofing, repairs, and so on. Thieves, they are. Oh, shame on you. Huh. Ah! Ah, Maurice, it's good to see you again. I heard you were in Valcourt and knew that you'd... Come in, come in. Have we finished with that? Yes, that's all. Good. Uh, don't let me forget to speak with Roland Saint-Pierre about the skis. No, no. Good afternoon, Father. Monsieur, we met. <laughs> you still have your horses? I sure do. Let me tell you, a good team of horses, nothing replaced. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, how's the mission in northern Ontario? Ah, it's just fine. It's a bit far. Well, but... it's a bit far to walk, but uh, it's better than Africa. 300 miles north of Timmins, mm. so I heard. I've got a surprise for you. Come on. Mademoiselle Dupont, I'll be back in five minutes. Very well. 
Don't lose him. We're almost out. You see the new one there? Well, it's all yours. Huh? Yeah. A snowmobile might be useful for the mission, eh? But... Well, that sure beats all, don't it? The good father and the devil's own contraption. <laughs> My goodness. Well, I'm sure to be useful. It's just that we never get it up there. Much too far. What do you mean, too far? Well, it's because we have no roads that go there. He's right, you know. It's the back of beyond. For a B-12, the back of beyond is a breeze. Come <laughs> <laughs> on. Have you got a minute? What is it? <laughs> I just spoke to Tom Fraser on the phone. He wants you to call him right away. Fraser with the Quebec North Shore? That's the one. They're already working with snowmobiles in the woods, but there's something else he wants to discuss. Right now, we're planning an expedition. Father Maurice has to get the B-12 to his mission. You never knew a car could go up there. This will be the first. Come on, bring the map. You know, if we did it right, people would talk about it. No, no, it's just because I want to help out Father Maurice. As soon as we have snow enough and the lakes are covered with thick ice, you thought of the best we'll... way to get your supplies. Do you mind, Germain? We'll be taking no chances. We'll parachute in food, supplies, everything. Think you're able to drive that thing, Maurice? Oh, that won't be a problem. When Joseph Armand Bombardier gets it into his head, you bet. What do you want? Uh. You're out early with the flowers this morning. Yes, well, I had a few minutes. You know, you might have hired someone for that. Oh, no, I love doing it. Bye. Bye. You could come and plant some around the factory. I don't think so. But you could hire someone for that. <laughs> I won't be too late. Oh, you won't, eh? I haven't got time. Oh, Monsieur Belanger, come in, come in. I don't want to disturb you, though. No, no, it's all right. Did you have a pleasant drive from Montreal? Very. I have the report on your finances. Well, why don't you sit down, and we'll look at that. For the current year, your turnover reached $2,300,000. You've had a business increase of 90%. You are a millionaire. Millionaire. Is that all it means to you? The company's the millionaire. Mm -hmm. OK, if you wish. There's more, though. It might be improved even further. Look at page 8. Page 8? The company might diminish its cost of production in rationalizing its supply network. It's a question of organization. You could double your turnover merely by moving the factory to Montreal. Monsieur Bélanger, don't you think it's beautiful here in Valcourt? Yes. So do I. So we're staying in Valcourt. <laughs> Yes. You want me to use a double zero? No, 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 the zero, that one. Zero? Okay. You want me to trim it any closer, or...? Uh, a bit more. Look. You want it to turn clear. You fit it up, fit it up real tight. There. Come on, let me show you. There, and move your chisel up as close as possible. See? But no more than that, eh? Understand? Now you finish it. Very easy to drive, too. There's Elman now. 
over here. Um, I want to present Monsieur Gagnon. How do you do? Monsieur Blue. We're very impressed. How do you do, sir? It's fantastic. Amazing. Yeah, well, take a look around. Right, we will. Here, here's the prospectus. Now we'll have a look at, at the motor. Follow me. Monsieur Bombardier, you have a phone call from Europe. They asked for the president of the company. Monsieur Bombardier! Just say the president's away on a fishing trip. I believe it's important. Well, then you say that you're the president. That I'm the... Monsieur Bombardier! Stop disturbing me, do you hear? Pa, uh, there's a problem with the bearings. Look, uh, I had a little accident with the car. You wrecked my car? I was with Jean-Claude. I went to see Albert Menard. I wasn't going fast. I must have been a little too close to the wall. And... Would you mind explaining why I deserve to have such a... Don't you see you're bothering me? But it's not my fault. Besides, I intend to pay you for the repairs. Not with a summer job, you can't. When I'm working my full head off for you, day and night, without time to breathe, what do you do? You think you have a right to smash up my car! Hey, I'm not your employee, and I don't have to put up with you and your fits. Germain! You try to be the father of everyone in Valcourt. Of everyone but me! Yeah, I'm over here. What's wrong? Nothing. What are you doing there? You look so worried. I spend too much time at the factory. Can't keep my mind on anything. To invent, you have to have the time and the space. All that I'm able to do is settle the problems of others. Must you take it so seriously? Why don't we take a vacation? What would we do? Nothing. You go on a vacation to do nothing. Now what I need is, is somewhere to be all alone, not too far away. Not somewhere to work, I hope. Why, no, not at all, where I won't be interrupted.
Madame Bombardier? Yes, that's me. Thomas Fraser, from the Quebec North Shore? Ah, Mr. Fraser. Armand has spoken of you. Is that so? Ah, beautiful Sunday afternoon. Yes, it is. So this is where he comes to rest. It's far from his work. That's a good thing to start with. <laughs> Claire! Claire, show Mr. Fraser where your father is. Tom, what brings you here? Are you lost? <laughs> no, no. You haven't come to give me more work, have you? Oh, that depends. <laughs> well, so this is where you come when you want to hide. Yeah, a lovely spot, eh? Yes, it is. Uh, did you know that we were using the B-12 for working in the woods to haul our logs out? Yeah, I heard about that. I hope it works. Well, it seems to. It seems to work. Well, I'll tell you. Um, the lumberjacks, they hook each sled load uh, up to a snowmobile mm -hmm. and pull it out of the woods down to the river. Then they give it a, a sort of jerk, uh, which causes the logs to overturn. Not a bad idea, but uh, the equipment wasn't built for such work. So it breaks down a lot. Yeah, loggers are hard on machines. Yeah. It demands another machine for that work. The B-12 wasn't meant to carry anything but people, not to haul logs. <laughs> Saint My son Germain. How do you do? Mr. Fraser. How do you do? I got everything you wanted me to get. Good. Yeah. Well, I suppose a hydraulic piston would do it. Germain, bring us a couple of beers. If you're really interested in working on a prototype, mm. we'd be more than happy to run the tests on it. That would be a very highly specialized item. There's not much demand for it. <laughs> Mr. Bombardier, these days lumbering is a huge business. I'm sure if you start. You'll never keep up. <laughs> I've turned out a lot more than that. The Quebec North Shore would consider it an honor to work with you. Mm -hmm. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. I don't know what to do anymore. The fact is, we've had a winter without a snowflake, and no one wants to buy a snowmobile. Winter's not over yet. It'll snow. It's bound to. It's already the end of February, you know. A miracle is what we need. Our inventory is too large now. Don't you think? And there's the balance sheet we have to consider. If it continues this way, our turnover is only 1,200,000. That's a shortfall of 39%. Some of the men will have to go. Oh, the layoffs are part of the answer. That's true, but they can't solve everything. Well, our suppliers are getting impatient with us now, too. Well, they can just wait. No one will get laid off. I think folks have trouble enough now. We've got the talent. We've got workers that want to work. Give them something else to do so they're not idle. Even the suppliers are quite willing to be patient, but only on one condition. You've got to come back to the factory. You must take control of the business again. In person, I mean. That would reassure everyone, I guarantee it. He's right. When you're out in Kingsbury, even though you're busy there, everyone seems to think you don't care about the factory. Hmm. Hello? Lopal, it's the painters, they're finished. Tell them that's all for today. Yes, I'm coming. Excuse me. Mm. 
Now look, the situation is far from catastrophic. However, I think it's time for some changes. In order to revitalize the operation, we need to rethink the company's direction. There's no point denying it. We have to realize the authorities will soon be plowing the roads. Soon, no one will need nor want the snowmobile. What do you want me to do? Make refrigerators from now on? <laughs> no, I wouldn't go that far, but... Are you telling me I should forget the snow and do something else? I'm only trying to say it's rather risky to stick to one product which relies solely on the snow. Yeah, I know, I know. After all, the snow is... Just because we have a factory in men, they want us to produce refrigerators now. Refrigerators? No, it's just a matter of speaking. I was always fascinated by the snow. Now, that's beautiful work. Opening the roads in winter. Now, try to get hold of Tom Fraser in Bicomo. I have to talk to him. Very well. Those uh, refrigerators are... Just forget the refrigerators. Gentlemen, in the 1930s and 40s, Joseph Armand Bombardier revolutionized transportation in the snowbound north. Then in the 50s, he turned his attention to the lumber industry and the exploration for oil. From then on, we witnessed a surge in Bombardier's growth with the production of vehicles for heavy industry, each one more impressive than the last. You are looking at what is perhaps our greatest success. It is the famous muskeg. Thanks to the muskeg, exploitation of our natural resources can continue year-round in all weather conditions. This is Sir Vivian Fuchs. He chose the muskeg over all other vehicles for his successful Antarctic expedition. The muskeg has been sold everywhere. In Africa, in Alaska, in Greenland, and Scandinavia in Japan, Australia. Yes? I just stopped by to see Mama on the way, and I'm sure something was bothering her. She seems to think you're awfully worried these days. Does she? Yep. And she's not the only one who thinks that. You think my life was a successful one? Really, Papa? Hmm. Well, I think it was a failure now and then. You don't mean that. Look. My one dream was to make a vehicle that would float on the snow. <laughs> Just look where it got us. It got you a long way. <laughs> and your mother worries because I'm worrying. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll have a talk with her. <laughs> How's the job? I love it there. <laughs> it won't be long till we move to the new factory. Everyone's so excited. No one's ever seen anything quite so modern. <laughs> Oh, and Mademoiselle Dupont wanted to ask a favor of you. What's that? Monseigneur de Ranlot wrote you a letter about his charity, and she wants to give something special this year. It's been a good year. How much? She wasn't sure. 
Two or three thousand? Tell her a check for five thousand is fine. Uncle Raymond showed me the sales figures for the Muskang. They went up another 30% this year. Well, it's a good machine. <laughs> I've got a new job for you. Vice President is a swell job. I keep thinking of the snow. I want you to help me in constructing something special. There are lots of better guys than me for that. You'd better get yourself an engineer. I'm not looking for an engineer. I'll think about it. I'll think about it, yeah. We're not in the Middle Ages anymore. I bet you could count on one hand the major enterprises here in Quebec that haven't been unionized so far. Well, the best thing would be to ask all the workers how they feel. Do you want a union or don't you want one? But it's not quite as simple as that. The employees all respect Monsieur Bombardier. He's helped a lot of people in Valcourt. So folks refuse to join the union because they like the boss. <laughs> That's not what I said. In the village, we all know the boss. Not like in town. Well, it sounds like I should explain what a union really does. Well, now, Uncle Leopold. Yeah. You've returned to your old love, eh? That's right. If we hire 20 guys or so, we'll catch up on the work and be in a position to deliver on time. Yeah, I know you'll do what's right, Leopold. There's something eating you. There's some talk about a union. No, it's not very serious yet, but... The unions, eh? It's something we'll have to face sooner or later. Jamin, where'd you put the gauge? In the second drawer. Unions are for city folk. If the employees have something to say... What's the matter? Nothing more than heartburn. You should let up. Get a bite to eat. We're gonna play some softball later. Come and join us. I've got to finish this. No more than 15 pounds on that, eh? Papa. Do it.
sandwich or have a drink. Hello. Hello. Hi there. Hello. Hello, sir. Yeah. Hey, Leopold. Huh? Is that your model there? <laughs> you forgot the lace curtains there for the windows. <laughs> I never saw a red one. Oh, well, if the cost of production keeps going up, the profits will go down. <laughs> there he is. Leopold will straighten that out for you. What? <laughs> what will Leopold straighten out now, huh? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch that. It's fattening, Mademoiselle Dupol. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. <coughs> right from the start, it has always been my great ambition, and still is today, to better the standard of living of all our employees and to help our village progress. <clears throat> in order to succeed in life, one must have great strength of character, which allows no concession and no retreat in the face of any obstacle whatsoever. <clears throat> As Providence saw fit to endow me generously with these qualities, I count it a blessing. Hmm. However, a continuing state of nervous tension and fatigue means that I lose my composure now and then, regardless of every effort to dominate myself. Believe me. Therefore, I beg forgiveness of all those whom I may have offended or to whom I may have caused pain during the past year. Now that'd be for you, Marie-Jeanne. Why, I never had a problem with personality with Mr. Bobati. No. Da, 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 da. <clears throat> I must say, in view of recent rumors, that I can't help but question the motives of those who would support certain actions. Did any of you here know that last night a meeting was held in Valcourt for the formation of a union? I knew he would, but how do you know? <laughs> he would. Well, that's that. I knew he couldn't keep out of it. I knew it. I'd like you gentlemen to know that I'm not opposed to a union, not to a union of the heart. <laughs> But I don't think that a union in Valcourt would be the answer to our problems. I do think, and I believe in all sincerity, that a union brings all the problems that the workers and the company neither need nor want. You see? Geez, they're all like that. But we will, though. May I ask our foreman, exactly what have you done that the fever of the union burns in our ranks? He's just trying to scare you. What did he have to pour oil on the fire for? He's right, though. I know that it's difficult to please everyone. But I also know that had we had a little more vigilance to start with, we would have spared ourselves this unpleasantness. I want to invite you, before it's too late, to come and to talk with me as soon as it's possible, alone or in a group. We'll and this way, you will be armed with the facts before taking any action which you are likely to regret. Yes. Well, all right. That was all that I wanted to say. Now, I, I would like you to express my very best wishes to your families. And I hope 1958 will be a good one for you. I wish you happiness, good luck, health, and prosperity.
have waited all afternoon. Shouldn't be long. There she is now. Ah. Hello. I just wanted the architect to show him the designs he did for the new wing. Look, Leopold, it'll have to be some other day. He must get some rest. Oh, no, it won't take but a minute. No, the doctor doesn't want him to have visitors. So do me a favor, will you, and come back another time because he's not up to it now. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello, dear. Mm -hmm. Hey. Why, yes, but Germain is something else. Yeah? Ah. That's my radio. Yeah? You, you took it to bits, though. No need to worry. I'll put it all back. It is amazing how small everything is in there. Don't fool with that. Germain, hand me the pills. Mama. It'll help you to sleep a little. Now, we'll just put this all away. Easy, you mustn't mix things up. Be careful, I won't be able to put it all back. It wouldn't by any chance have been Leopold's voice I heard. He just left. He dropped by to say there was nothing important for today. Oh. Right now, what you've got to do is get some sleep. What do you mean, sleep? I don't do anything but sleep lately. The doctor says that nerves cause the pain in your stomach. Oh, it's not quite so bad now. It's been going away. I had an idea for a new clutch. I wonder if we shouldn't work on, on a way to use a belt drive. Think it might work? You've got to face the facts, though. The report you requested us to make confirms our worries. What you're proposing there is the exact opposite of how I've worked since I set up the company. Except for Germain. Your children are much too young, and they have no business experience. That will come, though. Often, a part of the inherited assets will have to be sold to a third party to satisfy duties. Do you know what that means, Monsieur Bombardier? Yeah. It means that Germain may have to sell a good percentage of his shares one day to pay his inheritance taxes. There are laws, both provincial and federal, concerning succession which you'd be foolish to ignore. But I spoke to my children. Their wish is to keep the company and make it flourish. Most other businesses with a structure the same as yours, where all power is concentrated in the person who founded them, have almost always ended in disaster. Well, that's not going to happen with us. Monsieur Bombardier, you have got to begin in the near future to delegate your power. You must set up a board of directors. If you wish, we'll draw up a detailed outline offering you a range of ways to do it. I have never let anybody tell me what to do, and I'm not going to start now, and certainly not when it comes to my very own will. There are laws, there are rules, and I'll learn them and respect them. But I'm the one who'll decide how my estate will be passed on. Very well. Papa, when you were young and you worked there in Montreal, you really ran away from home, huh? Why do you ask that? If I ran off sometime, you think you'd let me get away with it? Did you adjust that?
When I went to Montreal, I wasn't really running away. Oh, no? Here. It wasn't like it is today. You had to cope then. And what's more, I had an idea. And when you get an idea in your head... You don't let anything stop you. That's not running away, though. Yeah, well, now I'm leaving you. When you get an idea in your head... Where are you going? Oh, to see my wife. You don't know how lucky you are that she's not in Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> What did you want? I heard they're going to hold a meeting tonight. Uh, yeah. You can't blame them for wanting to get organized. I always treated the workers fairly. When they had problems, we talked about it. Yes, well, I know all that. But I'm afraid we don't have much choice. <laughs> We're at least 10 years behind in asserting our claims. It's time to act, to That's let them right. know we exist. As long as the old man's in charge, he's going to pull the rug out from under us. He'll close the factory before he lets a union inside the door. Yeah, but if we all stand together, there's nothing he can do. Well, I think the only way to find out if we want a union is to put it to a vote. OK, you're right. But before we can take a vote on it, we've got to get organized formally, which means each department has to pick out a representative. Right. Yeah. yeah. All of us seem to think that it's time we got us a union. When you wanted to build your house, Fernand Gauthier, we were willing to loan you money for the land, and we financed the building. Name me one union that would do that. It's not the same thing. If it's the hours you want changed, we can always talk about it. There are guys who had seniority on the assembly lines. And from one day to the next, they were sweeping the floors or working in the warehouse. When there's a drop in the orders, I don't want a hundred guys to twiddle their thumbs on the assembly line, so I find them something else to do. We're skilled workmen, not common laborers. Well, Is that what right. unions are? So employees can tell me the way to run my company? Now that's intimidation. He has every right to speak out. 
You're from Montreal. We gave you a job. Because you married Cyprien Turcotte's daughter, and because the city life's too rough for her. The workers are meeting here to discuss a union. They have a right to express themselves freely. I propose that Monsieur Bombardier and his brother leave the hall. <laughs> then we'll put it to a vote. All those against? All those for? Abstentions? Majority. Well? The employees want to get unionized. I wasn't thinking of that. The doctor, I thought you went to see him. Oh, I know, I forgot. I forgot. It was a lovely party. There were a lot of children. And I told Germain I'd be there. Germain. He helped his daughter blow out her candles and then he dropped off to sleep. He slept through the whole party. Did he? <laughs> The boy's dead on his feet after a day with you and your sled. Oh, don't you worry. We're almost finished. Now what? Hello? Yeah. Oh, no, I'm still here. Yeah. Why, thanks. I'm glad you called me. Good night. Who was it? Leopold. Oh, leave it, leave it. They voted against. Against? Against the union. Mama, I have a surprise for you tomorrow. You do? Well, what is it? You're curious. Curious. Wait till tomorrow. Come on now. I'm coming. Does that bring back memories? The good old days. Now let's go, let's go. I brought you here because I have two surprises for you. Yep, you stay here. I'll be right back. Stay here. What is it? Curious. Turn around. Don't move. Now this will be my first surprise. Well, look at it. Uh -huh. Is that what you were doing with Germain? Yeah. And what do you do with it? What do you do with it? And the second? The second what? The second surprise. Oh. 
This spring, I'm taking you on a tour of Europe. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to come? We'll try it out in the hills. Don't you trust me or what? You won't drive too fast? You know I never drive too fast. You ready, my dear? Come on. Up you go. There. That's it. You know, maybe we ought to take a pair of snowshoes. Doubting Thomas. Stop! <laughs> There we go. Are you all right? Should have brought the snowshoes. Ah! <laughs> 